I'm going to show you a case study real quick that a farmer I work with in North Carolina. Ray Steyer. In fact, Buzz is going on there to go see him on Friday. We're going to roll down the cover crops. 75 years, that's his soil. That's his soil right there. That's his farm, 155 acre farm. This is what he used to do. It's kind of dark, I'm going to have to put it in more in white letters. He used to mortar or plow, haul manure. He used to have a dairy. That's what it was. And this was his beginning cover. He got into no-till. Well, he, number one reason why people go into no-till. I mean, the majority of the farmers go into no-till because it saves time. Well, the first benefit, <clears throat> the main reason I went to no-till was because of time. I was getting more to do every year and there was less time to do it. And you, you get pushed up, so when you started to plant no-till, you could do away with all the tillage and everything and, and get it planted more timely. And uh, eventually then you'd see the benefits. You'd save fuel, you save time, and, and uh, things like that. But you see the benefits in the soil. What's the downside of this type of farming? You have to think harder. Your job is to mimic nature again. So look at this, what we did here. So why do you go? Time. It saved him time. He couldn't get around with the dairy and all the animals and blah, blah, and do all the tillage. Not enough time. Look at his old equipment. You don't have to have fancy equipment. Look how tall his ryegrass gets. And he rolls it down. It's beautiful. Look how he rolls that down. We're going to talk about that. He started, he started mix, starting with, uh, he started doing experiments with all kinds of cover crop. That's vetch. Look how tall that vetch is. Most farmers that would see that, they would go, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with all that biomass? That's freaky. That scares me. Not Ray. Look at his cover crop. It's rye with crimson clover, with vetch, and radish all mixed together. And what does he do with it? Look how it looks when it's rolled over. Well, I'm going to show you this. Look at his corn, and he grows sunflowers in strips. So he grows his, he, what his operation does now is he raises cattle, feeder cattle. So he pushes 120 cows every year through there. So he, he grows silage after silage year after year. But he grows it in strips. That's his main crop. But let me show you here. Look what he rolls it down with, an old culti packer. You know what a culti packer is? is to break up the clods. He gets that radish, I mean he gets that, that um, cover crop, and then it smashes it down like this, and rolls it, and he lays it like this. He rolls it, and then he lay, it lays down like that, and he sprays it, after with Roundup, then he no-tills silage corn right into it. So, but remember, he only uses the Roundup to make sure he gets 100% kill on the rye. He said, if he could get a really good crimper roller, he wouldn't even have to spray Roundup. Now remember, he used to use four herbicides. Now he's down to one herbicide Roundup, half rate. Whoa, he just knocked, he's almost organic. Look at this. Beautiful cover crop rolled down. This was the, how much biomass he used in the, in the, in the beginning. 100% no-till. See how it looks when it's rolled down? It's beautiful. It's a be when I used to farm, I used to get soil all over me because I was tilling. Now I just get pollen. I said, man, this is the way to farm. It's so easy. I'm learning with him. This is what our job is within RCS, to work with our landowners, mentor, also learn from them. <laughs> they teach me just as much as I teach them. See the mix? There it is. Ray says, well, he never smiles. He says, when you talk about no-till, he's very serious, he says. But he's just a wonderful guy. He's a very, very humble man. Look at the corn pop out. So when it rains, Mateus, what happens? Do you see any bare soil? When you go across the country, Chris, what do you see in between the, the corn plants? Bare soil. All over 86 million acres. So if it rains, yeah. See the difference? 
But they say, well, we can't do this. It's too much work. Blah, blah, blah. It won't work. That's what we have to deal with. Old mindsets. He goes, radishes? There's Dr. Rakowski. Ray, when I first started working with Ray, he didn't know how much manure he was using. So we did a tarp test. Because nobody was going to believe me when I said, Ray, you don't use chemical fertilizer at all? He goes, no, I don't use any. We decided with the help of a district conservationist who gave me a lot of uh, help, John Timmons, that we should cut down on this fertilizer and see what it would do. We planted some test plots where we cut it down to half, a fourth, and some of them with none in it. The one that we didn't have any nitrogen on, we took a tissue sample and sent it off and there was nothing lacking in it. So I decided if I didn't need it, why buy it? I haven't used any uh, nitrogen on my corn since 1996. He didn't realize that his soil was getting healthier and healthier and it started cycling on its own. So he gets all these nutrients from his cover crops and 10 tons of manure. But he's only got enough manure, guys, for half the farm. So that half the farm doesn't even get manure. And yet his corn silage is beautiful. Oh, people are going to say, but how about economics? Rays with cover crops, 104 per acre. No-till without cover crops. And buying your own fertilizer and doing the other way, 212. He saves $108 an acre. That's pretty good. And his soil is getting healthier. He really believes in high quality feed. This is our, his, his guy that mixes his feed for him. You know what he said? Ray, your feed is always consistent. Your numbers, look at your protein, desired range. The acid detergent, look at it, where it's at. Look at the total digestible nutrients, the energy. It's consistent. He became a no-till farmer. Look at the cows. Because his soils are healthy, he doesn't have to buy extra ration. Remember I told you? Healthy plants, healthy animals, healthy people, healthy watershed. It's all connected. He saves that much every year because he doesn't have to feed extra supplements because his soils are so healthy. Okay, why? Time savings? Reduce petroleum base, healthy soils help reduce the impact of drought, we increase the feed quality. My mission in my life is to make sure that everybody goes no-till by the, in the next 20 years. Do you think I'll be able to reach that, James? Absolutely. Man, that's what I want to hear, man. Now you see why I get so pumped up about this. It's about our future, every one of us in here, guys. It's about all of us. It's because it's all about energy. It's about getting clean water. So if you address the sustainability part of it, it addresses the water quality part of it. Well, it all works together and what you, uh, what crops you grow and the way you manage them and things like that, try to keep your nutrients up <clears throat> and uh, things like that. It's, it's all got to work in the same circle. It's like spokes on a wheel. If one of them's weak, you're not going to go anywhere. Isn't that amazing? So Ray said, what my soul thought of me before no-till. He said he was just a horse's butt for not doing it a long time ago. That, that's his family. Who plants a seed beneath the sod and waits to see, believes in God. That's what his term is. That's his, this is his PowerPoint. I did it for him.